Hello, my name is Mr. Chippen. I teach biology and AP biology at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. This is AP Environmental Science, Unit 4, Earth Systems and Resources 4.1 Plate Tectonics. That's a lot of things to say at the beginning of the video. I haven't taught Earth space stuff. This isn't really space, it's just Earth Earth stuff. What is plate tectonics? It's the idea that the Earth has a shell and that shell is called the lithosphere. Lithosphere is like the crust, upper part of the mantle, which is like the second layer, right, of the Earth. <clears throat> and that crust is divided into these plates, and you can see the plates on this picture. And plate tectonics is the idea that these plates are constantly moving around and changing places, and those changing places cause a certain phenomena to occur. And so we're gonna look at that uh, there are some different boundaries, right? You see the boundaries. There are different kinds of boundaries. One of those is called a convergent boundary. Converge is when two things come together, right? And so there are three different kinds of convergent boundaries. Uh, one of these is called an ocean ocean convergence or oceanic oceanic convergence. This is when two ocean plates come together. You see that in a couple places uh, around the globe. Uh, Mariana Trench is an example of that, which is like um, over here, right, in this area. And what happens is that one goes underneath the other. That goes underneath is called subdux. And when it does this, what it does is it causes islands to sort of raise up. This island arc is what you'll see that called Aleutian Islands in Alaska. A great example of an island arc at a convergence, oceanic convergence. A oceanic continental convergence is an ocean continent plate, right, where a continent and an oceanic is coming together like what you see here on the west coast of the United States, uh, very similar to that. And what has happens here in the Andes Mountains is another one down here, good. Um, what you see with that is one, the ocean plate subducts, goes underneath the continental crust and causes volcanic activity because as this crust sort of melts and turns into lava, that pressure builds up, causes it to rise up and, you know, do the volcano thing. And then you have continental convert, continental, continental convergence, where two continental plates come together and they don't really subduct very easily. And so what they end up doing is pushing up. And so you have mountain ranges there. Himalayas, great example, great picture of that in a moment. Uh, divergent boundaries is where two plates are coming apart. And so with a divergent boundary, um, what you have is you have like new crust forming, right? Uh, as that magma is exposed or as the crust thins, uh, and the magma pushes up. Um, so you can have a couple of things happen here. You can have volcanoes occur here. Um, a lot of, there's a very famous one here in the Atlantic Ocean where a new crust is being formed. You have these plates that are moving further and further apart from one another. Um, I'll figure out the order of things eventually. And um, volcanoes, earthquakes occur at these divergent boundaries. Transform boundaries are where two plates are moving like side by side, um, like, you know, like this, as opposed to up underneath one another. Um, and crust is not created or destroyed. Sounds like one of Newton's laws. And the big hazard here is earthquakes. Um, I mentioned the California boundary as something else earlier, but it is an example of a transform boundary. This plate is kind of sliding past one another, causes earthquakes. You can see a couple of the other ones here in the picture as well. And so three kinds of tectonic boundaries. What's going on at these tectonic boundaries? Well, you can see the global distribution here. You have the red representing uh, convergent boundaries where you have a lot of volcanoes and these islands that are forming. Uh, you have some divergent boundaries there in the lighter colored color and then you have the orange being transformed boundaries and you can see there's just a, a wide mix of things right it doesn't I mean I'm sure there's a pattern here that a geologist would recognize um, but for us there's no real discernible pattern and uh, you can see how volcanoes sort of come up in these arcs and these islands form along the this is what we would predict to happen 
right? Exactly what we would predict to happen based on what we've been learning about. Earthquakes. Let's talk a little bit about earthquakes. And so this is obviously a big uh, concern along tectonic boundaries. However, it's not just along tectonic boundaries. There can be other things that are other places that earthquakes happen. New Madrid Fault is a great example of this. New Madrid Fault does not represent a tectonic boundary, yet it does represent an active fault, one of the most active faults. And um, it's this, there's like a tear uh, in, the bound, in the actual plate itself and can cause some significant earthquake um, activity. Uh, I, I'm from this area of the country, so I just found it interesting. But earthquakes uh, basically represent um, when you have two boundaries having this friction, and that friction sort of releases, right? And it causes the earth to, to shake, and everything that's on the earth to shake as well. And buildings and that sort of thing aren't really made for that. In some parts of the world, they are. But, uh, and then in this part of the country, in around West Kentucky, Boot Hill to Missouri, What's interesting is the soil actually becomes liquid because there's so much sand in the soil, which is not good to be in quicksand because you've watched all the movies. Uh, here's an example of a convergent boundary. This is the Himalayan mountains. You can just see it, right? You can see those plates being pushed up, causing these giant mountains, Gandalf. And then here's a, a transform boundary. This is San Andreas Fault, right? You see these two um, plates sliding past one another. And you can, this is a physical manifestation of that above ground, which is fascinating, right? Um, significant earthquake activity in this part of the country. Let's look at a practice problem, shall we? Diagram shows cross-section of an oceanic plate subducting underneath a continental plate. So this is a continental oceanic convergence area, right? That's what we're automatically thinking. Which of the following best explains why volcanoes commonly form? We know that volcanoes form because this plate is melting, building up lava, which creates pressure and eventually has to let go of that pressure. Let's go find that in ABCD. A, rising magma is generated as the oceanic plate subducts and melts, creating volcanic activity on the overriding plate. Hey, we don't even need to read BCD because A is correct. Man, I hope this was helpful. I'm going to be doing 4.2.